you, you, you are greeted once more. To, to today's word uh, is God's power, our voice of faith. God's power, our voice of faith. God's power, our voice of faith. You know, we, we are living in times where God's power and this authority are questioned daily. Amen. Can you bow our heads and pray? Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, mighty God, that your word shall never come back to you void. Your word shall always accomplish that which you purpose to accomplish and prosper in the thing that you send it to. Holy Spirit, speak while listening. Align us with your purpose. Let your word, mighty God, have a free reign in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. I want you to listen carefully. Because this word is designed to help you weather this season. Amen. You need to know how to walk in this season. You need to know what to say, when to say, and how to say it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's leave them. Uh, don't even look at them. Some of you used to scream louder than them by far. Uh, the fact that we are adults does it make us better. It makes us responsible. Hallelujah. You know, I, there were times in our family that we, we lost a lot of members in a short space of time. It has never happened since I was born in the Dagada family. And I don't expect it to happen again. And that made us to, that made other people to question the power of God, the sovereignty of God, and the authority of God over our lives. And that makes us also, some people, to lose faith. When I was seated with my brothers and cousins, I told them that there are certain things that we cannot do, we cannot try to understand. All that you need to do is to stand by faith and believe that God is still God. Hallelujah. Because God is not changed by situations. God is not changed by circumstances. God is always God irrespective of the season. Hallelujah. He is almighty. He is all powerful. He is all knowing. He is everywhere, anytime. He can do anything, anywhere. Hallelujah. So sometimes we are in a season where it is easy to question God. It's easy to say, God, where are you? It's easy to say, God, what are you doing this season? But I want to put it to you. Do not speak that language. What, the, what needs to be questioned the most this season is where are you yourself? You need to question yourself. Where am I standing this season? Is my faith strong enough to help me weather this season? Hallelujah. This is not the season of complainers. This is not the season of fearful people. This is the season where the children of God and the church of God need to stand up and say, count us in. We still believe in that God. Hallelujah. Am I talking to someone? This is the season where the church needs to say, count us in. We still believe in that God. Yes, we see what's happening, but God is still a sovereign God. Hallelujah. His word is still powerful. His word changes things. You know, I, 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 was, I was consumed by Genesis 1. When God was creating the world, irrespective of whatever that was happening in the world, God did not reason with the waters. God did not reason with the chaos. All that God did was to release the word, let there be. And it happened. Hallelujah. What you listen to, you know, the media is bombarding us with messages of fear through statistics and, and other narratives. And those messages are meant to open the door. They are meant to open the door so that you can believe in the sickness. Today we need to talk about this. Hallelujah. 
you don't have, you know, as I said it to you, be careful, be responsible, do what needs to be done. However, what's important is keep on confessing the word of God. Hallelujah. Keep on doing what? Confessing the word of God. Do not confess what you are reading on the newspaper. Do not confess what you are reading on, on, any, on any other form of media platform. Confess the word of God. Why? You are the product of what God has said. Hallelujah. You know, when God created you, he said, the Bible said, and God said, let us make men. What did he use? His word. Your lungs are the product of God's word. Your head is the product of God's word. Whatever you are is the product of God's word. Am I talking to someone? Why am I saying that? That when the heart is not filled with the word of God, we lose what you call the force of faith. Am I talking to someone? Because you will speak out of the abundance of the heart. The mouth shall speak. What are you going to speak when you face situation? You will speak what you have been eating. You will speak what you have been feeding yourself with. Am I talking to someone? What is your language? What language do you speak? Do you speak death or life? Do you speak doubt or fear? What language do you speak? In this season, it's not a season to be careless with words. You, you are suffer, suffer, suffer. Hey, it's over. It's not a season to be careless with words. It's not a season to say something because it has been said 20 times, it makes it right. I want to put it to you. No matter how much you can say it 100 times, I still believe by his stripes I have been healed more than 2,000 years ago and nothing is going to change that. Am I talking to someone? Our faith, our confessions should not only be mental. You know, a mental confession and a spiritual confession are not the same. A mental confession is based on what your mind has been absorbing the whole week, the whole day, the whole night, or the whole morning. Those are mental confessions. But as you eat the word of God, as you continue to dwell in the word of God, your confessions turn from mental to spiritual. Your confessions start to get the ability to change and move things spiritually. You find yourself, I want to put it to you, you can never be careful enough in this world. Only the grace of God can sustain you and cover you wherever you are. You can never be careful enough. So you must just confess the right thing. When you enter the place, I sanitize this place by the blood of Jesus Christ. This environment is saturated by the blood of Jesus Christ. As I step into this place, I release healing and health. Sickness and diseases are not my portion. When you walk into the place, don't say, don't say what is being said in the place. Say what is being said in your heart. What is the voice of God saying in your heart? Who is your God? Hallelujah. Romans 8, 2 says, For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. So I want to put it to you, there are two laws that are at work. It's the law of life in Christ Jesus and the law of sin and death. Sickness and diseases, disease, diseases operate where? From the law of sin and death. When you confess that the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death, you have created a buffer, a boundary between you and death. Hallelujah. 
Do not make yourself a moving target. What is happening? I think you'll never know what will happen. Sometimes these things. You have just converted yourself into a moving target. Who are you? I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That is your identity. Hallelujah. Faith-filled ways always dominate the law of death and its forces. I want to put it here. I'm going to repeat again. Faith-filled ways always dominate the law of death and its forces. And with its forces. When God saw the world that the world was mixed up, he did not comment about the world with being mixed up. He did not, he said, I can see that the world is void and without form, but there, there is no commentary in the Bible about the, the badness of the earth and everything. All that God did was say, okay, I'm God. I'm supreme God. I'm, I'm, I'm the authority here. I'm not going to be moved by what's happening around, around me. I will speak my intentions. What is your intention to live? Am I talking to someone? What is your intention? For the law. Say the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Hallelujah. You know, I love what uh, Daniel, what, 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 what do they call him and his friends? Daniel and his crew. When Neb King Nebuchadnezzar created that God, they say anybody who doesn't bow to that God will do what? will die. There is a God that has been created that everybody is expected to bow to. We must refuse to bow to the law of sin and death. Am I talking to someone? We must refuse to bow to the law of sin and death. I'm going to repeat it again. Say, I refuse to bow to the law of sin and death. Don't compromise your spirituality in order to be relevant. Because some of us want to sound scientifically okay. You want to be involved in discussions. You know, there is this new strain, you know. You know, as far as I know, as far as I read about it, they say it can kill you within a minute. No, we don't engage in such discussions. Am I talking to someone? You don't engage in such a discussion. You can say, you know, when they say the strain, you say the blood. <laughs> there is a new strain. There is the same old blood of Jesus. When they say the strain, you say, by his stripes. Am I talking to someone? When they say the third wave, you say, you say what? There is a wave that has been moving from 2,000 years. That is the wave of the blood of Jesus Christ. That wave has been demolishing all the works of the enemy and its demons. And I'm riding on that wave. Is somebody with me this morning? Hallelujah. You know, there is a story. That was told by Dr. Cho. There is a lady came with a, a throat, throat cancer. She could not speak properly. Her cancer was destroying the throat. And when she entered the office, all that she was speaking was death. You know, doctor, it's so painful. I'm about to die. I don't think I'll make it. You know, they say this throat cancer is dangerous. So doctor said, no, see yourself healed. And she was already sold to the cancer of the throat. Her, her language was her dying and being buried. She was waiting for her to be buried because she was already sold to the, to the cancer of the throat. So, so the pastor said, you know what? 
because I can't convince you, I've got, some, I've got a homework to do, for you to do. You are going to the prayer mountain for a week. You are going to write this scripture down 50,000 times. By his stripes I'm healed. Every time you write, you confess it. Every time you write, you confess it. So she went to the mountain for a week because she was the diligent uh, co co congregant. She listened to the men of God. She went to the mountain. She, she wrote it, 50, by his stripes I'm healed. By his stripes I'm healed. So she, was, she write it, confess it. Write it, confess it. Write it, confess it. Write it, confess it. So she came back to the office of the, of the pastor. She was speaking normally. The voice was no longer hoarse. The cancer was gone, but she was not aware that she's healed after a week. So she, she was coming to present the paper, the book that she wrote uh, 50,000 50, times. She said, Pastor, I did it. I did it. What? You see, I wrote it 50,000 times. By his stripes, I'm healed. I'm healed. I did it 50,000 times. It is here. here is my proof. And the pastor said, okay, I can see that you did it. There is something that you are not aware of. What is it, pastor? You are speaking normally. Oh, yeah, that, now my voice is fine. Are you still in pain? Oh, yeah, no. Nah. The pain is gone. Yeah, the pastor said, oh, you are healed. He said, but you didn't pray for me. The pastor said, I did not need to pray for you. You needed to speak life unto yourself. So the more you are speaking by his stripes and healed 50,000 times, is the more you are giving yourself life. Tell me, how many times have you spoken death unto your life? You know, I, I'm suffering. Now you see, this money is not enough. It will never be enough. You know, this is not for me. You programming, your, your, a neurosurgeon said, your neuron, this, your, in the central nervous system, receive what you say several times. And once your, once your neurons receive that, they give an instruction to your body, to your cells. Guys, uh, they said we are weak. Uh, we are about to get sick. So please uh, prepare your body for sickness. And what happens? Your immune system lo loses guard. He said, okay, immune system, you have been instructed to receive a disease. So don't fight back any disease. The message has been recorded by your neurons and the nervous system. So immune system, don't do anything. Just wait. Just wait for the sickness. And also what we heard is that he said this sickness will kill him. So immune system, don't fight until there is no more life in this body. So who killed who? You killed yourself. So, we have been created to speak life. Hallelujah. That's the reason why somebody said we must never say to men, you have retired. Because when men hear that they have retired, any, any human being when they that they have retired, they say to the body, the body receives the message, you are no longer important. Your body is no longer needed. Retirement means that you are close to your grave. Please prepare yourself to die. That's the reason why most people, when they go into retirement, what happens? They get sicknesses. You get surprised. But this person, three months ago before they retired, they were healthy at work. At work, they were healthy. They were marching. They were strong. They, even though they were over 60 years, but they were fine. But the moment the word retirement is mentioned and received by the system, the system prepares itself to shut down. So if the scientific community can prove that your ways has the ability to bring you life or death, how about the word of God? Okay, can I, can I, can I question that again? How about the word of God? You need to put the word of God first. Make it your final authority. 
irrespective of the symptoms, irrespective of what you are feeling, do never surrender to any symptom. Never give the final authority to any symptom. Irrespective of what the situation might be, I want to put it to you. You were created by the word of God. You are the result of the word of God. Anything that is not in alignment with the word of God is not your portion. You didn't, you didn't get that one. If it is not in alignment with the word of God, it's not what? It's not your portion. How do you do? The Bible says, resist the devil. What he's going to do? He shall flee from you. Are you waiting to see someone with two horns and a tail and resist him? No, it's not going to work. You're not going to see that person. The thoughts that come to your mind. Things that you conceive with your mind. If you allow them to bear fruits and grow roots and not resist them, they will make you to be what they want you to be. Ah, you know me. Ah, you know it's too late for me. Things will never work out for me. You have just declared in heaven, it's too late for me. When Moses died, God said to Joshua, in Joshua 1 verse 8, this word of the Lord shall never depart of your mouth, from your mouth. You shall meditate upon it when? Day and night. Why did God instruct Joshua to meditate upon the word of God day and night? Some of you, you think that you are smart because you, you have read a book, you can sit down and, and reason something. You know, according to the statistics, 400,000 people are supposed to be dead in South Africa. Let's go and dig one million graves in case they surpass. According to the word of God, you shall live and not die and glorify the name of the Lord in the land of the living. That's what, that's what you shall confess. Hallelujah. Am I talking to someone? And what do you do when you, when you hear the word of God? Act on the word of God. Wake up in, you know what? There's a, wake up every day in your house. Wake up in your house and say, I speak life in my house. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak life unto my kids. I don't know where my wife is going. I don't know where my husband is going. I don't know where my mother is going. I don't know where my children are going. But I cover them with the blood of Jesus Christ. And wherever they go, they are preceded by the blood of Jesus Christ. Let the angels of the Lord encompass around them and deliver them. Let them be protected. Hallelujah. Am I talking to someone? That's acting on the word of God. You are acting on the word of God. The word, when the word is in the Bible, is not enough until it is confessed and acted upon. I wake up in the middle of the night and pray for, 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 for everyone in sleep. I can wake up in the middle of the night for 15 minutes and pray for my wife and kids and a car. I cover a car because my wife travels a lot more than me. I said, I'm pleading the blood. And, wh and whenever, I'm praying, whenever I'm praying for him, God will show me the accident that she was supposed to be involved in. I speak the word of God. It's, no, no, it, it shall not come to pass. She's, she's protected. She's, the angels of the Lord are around her. So you see, God has given you power to create your own environment. I don't want us to be religious today. I want us to take the word practically. Hallelujah. Because many of us, you want to, to be motivated in the church. Somebody said, there are some motivational speakers, they can convince a pig that it can fly. It will jump off the cliff, only to realize halfway down that the wings haven't grown yet. <laughs> and no reverse. You know, if you watch too much TV, like those uh, body pop say the better time break more, you know, a dead brick on the air and reverse and go back. <laughs> it doesn't happen. So, so is the word in the spiritual realm. 
When the word is released in the spiritual realm, it stays. It waits for you to and act, and the word will manifest that which you have said. Am I talking to someone? Let us go to 2 Peter 2.20. 2 Peter 2.20. I'm, I'm about to talk to someone. 2 Peter 2.20. We, we'll, we'll be done not so long. 2 Peter 2.20. Oh, glorious God, we praise your name, we lay our life before. Are you there? Read it aloud to yourself. <laughs> Read it aloud. Second. So, for if after they have expelled the pollution of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them. And, and, and what? And overcome. The latter end is worse for that. So, we, 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 we have, expe we have escaped the pollution, the defilement of the world through the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Am I talking to someone? You have escaped the defilement of the world. You have escaped everything that the world can bring to you. But the Bible says we are the one who entangle ourselves again. By what? By what we hear. We, 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 we give hearing to by what, what? By what we say. Hallelujah. Say I have escaped. The pollution and the, and the defilement of the world through the knowledge of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So those who have escaped that cannot put themselves there. Back again. Watch your tongue. Hallelujah. How do we live in the midst of everything? As a church, how do we live? Numbers 21 verse 9. How do we live in the midst of all of this? How do we live? I want you to reduce your intake of the statistics and increase your intake of the word. Amen? Reduce the intake of the statistics and increase the intake of what? Of the word. Numbers, Numbers 21 verse 9. If you are there, say shalom. What does he say? Read it aloud. Many of you know this scripture. We lay our life. 21 verse 9. It said, so Moses made a bronze serpent and put it on a pole. And so it was. If, if a serpent has bitten anyone, when he looked at the bronze serpent, he lived. What does the bronze serpent symbolize? The bronze serpent on the pole symbolize sin and death on the cross. So whosoever looked unto the cross will know that the sin and death has been defeated by the cross and they will do what? Live. Look unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. The what? The author. And what? The finish of your what? S say I look unto God the author and the finisher of my faith. Say, I will be what the word of God says. Not the statistics. Hallelujah. Okay, I nearly said something. 
Say I'm a spiritual being living in a body with a soul. Say it. Say I'm a spiritual being living in a body with a soul. So every sickness is spiritual before it becomes physical. Am I talking to someone? Sickness is what? Before it becomes what? So what do you do? Say I, say, I dominate in the spiritual realm. I rule the spiritual realm. How? How do you exercise authority in the spiritual realm? Let us go to Ephesians 2.10. First, your identity is important. Who are you? Ephesians 2.10. I am God's workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus. Let us stop there. You are what? God's final product. Created where? In Christ Jesus. So, your lab is where? Christ Jesus. You are where? In Christ Jesus. What are you? God's workmanship. What? So, that protects you against any impending danger. Knowing your identity and your position. But to to someone, who are you? So, so somebody said to me, I was at spa, hey, when I come close to the phone, I said to her, that person will have fasted maybe for 60 days just to be able to do that. I'm not a candidate of that. The anointing in my life doesn't allow those devils to play in my life. No, no, I'm not. I, I'm not. I'm not that. I'm not that. I am God's workmanship. What does it mean? It means that the anointing that is at work in Jesus' life is currently at work in my life right now as we speak. No, am I talking to someone? The, the anointing and the power that is set to work in the life of Jesus Christ now is set to work in my life when? Now. That's why you are called a Christian. You are not called a Christian because it's a name. That name is following what? The anointing. What does Christ mean? The anointed one and his anointing. So the Christian, the carrier of the anointing. It is not the name of a society club, of a, of, a, of, a, of a religious club called a church. A Christian means what? The carrier of what? Of the anointing. Why do you carry the identity and the person of Jesus Christ? Oh. Hmm. No, no. You, I, I, you, 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 I, I don't think you are, you are getting it. Do you know what you carry? The identity and the person of Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ walked into the graveyard where the madman of Gadara was, he did not say, demons, I rebuke you, go. They started complaining. Jesus Christ, what are you doing here? Why? He walked into the graveyard. The environment was changed. His anointing took over and the demons knew that they are not welcome here. We are his workmanship. Do you, do, do, you know, do, you know, do you know what is a workmanship? I love cars. And I was looking the way they make Rolls Royce. With the hand, everything. It's, it's a workmanship car. Attention to detail. When the Bible says you are his workmanship, God has given attention to detail to the spiritual person in you. No, no, no. You know, don't judge yourself based on what you are wearing, your body, your flesh, and your soul. Look unto Jesus. Look, go and read the book of Matthew. Look, Mark, and Matthew, and see the life of Jesus Christ. The very same life of that Jesus Christ lived. Why did Jesus come here to come? God has to come here on earth and teach us how to live again. He said what? The blind shall see. The sick shall be healed. 
the, 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 the death shall hear again. The death shall raise up again. Why? He is Christ. So he said, for where is man, which workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God afore prepared that we should work on them. You are living in a pre-prepared life, not prepaid. <laughs> yeah, we can call it prepaid because Jesus Christ has paid it all again. He has paid it all again. You are living in a pre-redeemed life. All that you need to do is to walk where Jesus has walked and declare what Jesus has declared and do what Jesus Christ has done. That is your life. You are not here on earth waiting to be a victim of something. Am I talking to someone? It's like you are working target, yes, Satan. No, any time he can shoot and then you will fall down and die. Is God on leave? Is Jesus Christ on leave? Did somebody drain back the blood of Jesus Christ to his body? The blood that was shed before the foundation of the world. That blood that was before time was. That blood is still at work even to this day. That blood can reverse everything. It can even reverse the works of time. You are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus. When you walk, know who you are. When you enter the place, the demons must tremble. They must move out. You cannot be at the same place with the demons. When I go home, I observe there are some people who have known wishes. When I'm at home, they don't walk on the street. Mm -mm, they can't. And that's when I've declared that it is my street, I'm here. And it's no flying area. Nobody flies. Brooms must be packed somewhere in the closet. No. I know who I am. For we are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus. Your spirit man was knitted together for victory. A breakthrough. Healing and deliverance. Whenever you speak, the angels of God don't hear you. They hear Christ. Stop talking the language of demons. Could they understand that language? They will hear you. Yo, I don't know. I think, I think, I think I'm getting flu. <laughs> yeah, link where guy left to carry block and why is every time in Thomas saw? How can Thomas block and queer left? I know the right one will follow. <laughs> and then it's headache. And I'm, I'm telling you, I know for the next three days, I'll be flat on my bed. A workmanship created in Christ Jesus, talking a foul language, defiling your body. Why are you entangling yourself again with the language of the world, whereas you have been redeemed with the, by the precious blood of Jesus Christ? Oh. Say, neighbor, you are too powerful. Say, say you are too powerful. Say, when I look at you, I see Christ. Say, I just see Christ. Say, you are shining. Demons can't even stand you. Those uh, body popites, they better break more in. You know, a dead brick on the air and reverse and go back. <laughs> it doesn't happen. So, so is the word in the spiritual realm. When the word is released in the spiritual realm, it stays. It waits for you to, and, and, and the word will manifest that which you have said. Am I telling you to someone? Amen. Let us go to Second Peter two twenty. Second Peter two twenty. I'm, I'm about to talk to someone. Second Peter two twenty. 
will, will be done or so long. Second Peter two twenty. Aloud to yourself. <laughs> Read it aloud. Second. So, for if after they have escaped the pollution of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them. And, and, and what? And overcome. The latter end is worse for that. So, we, 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 we have, expe we have escaped the pollution the defilement of the world through the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Am I telling you to someone? You have escaped the defilement of the world. You have escaped everything that the world can bring to you. But the Bible says we are the one who entangle ourselves again. By what? By what we hear. We, 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 we give hear it to by what, what? By what we say. Hallelujah. Amen. Say, I've escaped, I've escaped. The, pollution the pollution and the, and the, defilement, the defilement of the world the through the knowledge of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So those who have escaped that cannot put themselves there. Back again. Watch your time. Hallelujah. How do we live in the midst of everything as a church? How do we live? Numbers 21 verse 9. How do we live in the midst of all of this? How do we live? The finish of your what? Say, I look unto God. The author and the finisher of my faith say I will be what the word of God says not the statistics hallelujah okay I nearly said something say I'm a spiritual being living in a body with a soul Say, it, say I'm, a being, I'm a spiritual being living in a body, in a body with, a soul. with a soul. So every sickness is spiritual before it becomes physical. Amen. Am I telling someone? Amen. Sickness is what? Spiritual. Before it becomes what? Spiritual. So what do you do? Say, I, say I, dominate I dominate in the spiritual realm. The spiritual realm. I rule the spiritual realm how how do you exercise authority in the spiritual realm let us go to Ephesians 2 10 first your identity is important who are you Ephesians 2 10 I am God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus let us stop there you are what God's final product created when in Christ Jesus so your lab is where Christ Jesus you are where in Christ Jesus what are you God's workmanship what so that protects you against any impending danger knowing your identity and your position but to someone, Amen. who are you? S -s Somebody said to me, I was just by, hey, when I come post to him, only while I talk to him, I said to her, that person will have fasted, maybe for 60 days. She has to be able to do that. I'm not a candidate of that. The anointing in my life doesn't allow those devils to play in my life. 
No, no, I'm not. I, I'm not. I'm not that. I'm not that. I am God's workmanship. What does it mean? It means that the anointing that is at work in Jesus' life is currently at work in my life right now as we speak. No, am I talking to someone? The, the anointing and the power that is set to work in the life of Jesus Christ now is set to work in my life when? Now. That's why you are called a Christian. You are not called a Christian because it's a name. That name is following what? The anointing. What does Christ mean? The anointed one in this anointing. So the Christian, the carrier of the anointing. It is not the name of a society club, of a, of, a, of, a, of a religious club called a church. A Christian means what? The carrier of what? Of the anointing. Why do you carry the identity and the person of Jesus Christ? Oh. Hmm. No, no. You, I, I, you, 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 I, I don't think you, you are getting it. Do you know what you carry? The identity and the person of Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ walked into the graveyard where the mad men of Gadara was, he did not say, demons, I rebuke you, go. They started complaining. Jesus Christ, what are you doing here? Why? He walked into the graveyard. The environment was changed. His anointing took over and the demons knew that they are not welcome here. We are his workmanship. Do you, do, you, do, you know, do you know what is a workmanship? I love cars. I was looking at the way they make Rolls Royce. With the hand, everything. It's, it's a workmanship car. Attention to detail. When the Bible says you are his workmanship, God has given attention to detail to the spiritual person in you. No, no, no. You know, don't judge yourself based on what you are wearing, your body, your flesh, and your soul. Look unto Jesus. Look, go and read the book of Matthew. Look, Mark, and Matthew, and see the life of Jesus Christ. The very same life of that Jesus Christ lived. Why did Jesus come here to come? God has to come here on earth and teach us how to live again. He said, what? The blind shall see. The sick shall be healed. The, 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 the deaf shall hear again. The dead shall raise up again. Why? He's Christ. So he said, for where is man with workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God afford prepared them to work on them. You are living in a pre-prepared life. Not prepared. <laughs> yeah, we can call it prepaid because Jesus Christ has paid it all again. Has paid it all again. You are living a pre redeemed life. All that you need to do is to walk where Jesus has walked and declare what Jesus has declared and do what Jesus Christ has done. That is your life. You are not here on earth waiting to be a victim of something. Am I talking to someone? Yeah. It's like you're working target, yes, Satan. No, anytime he can shoot and then you will fall down and die. Is God on leave? Is Jesus Christ on leave? Did somebody drain back the blood of Jesus Christ to his body? The blood that was shed before the foundation of the world. That blood that was before time was. That blood is still at work to you to this day. That blood can reverse everything. It can even reverse the works of time. You are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus. When you walk, know who you are. When you enter the place, the demons must tremble. They must move out. You cannot be at the same place with the demons. When I go home, I observe there are some people who have no wishes. When I'm at home, they don't walk on the street. Mm -mm, they can't. 
And that's when I've declared that it is my street, I'm here. And it's a no-flying area. Nobody flies. Brooms must be packed somewhere in the closet. No. I know who I am. For we are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus. Your spirit man was knitted together for victory, a breakthrough, healing, and deliverance. Whenever you speak, the angels of God don't hear you. They hear Christ. Stop talking the language of demons. Because they understand that language. They will hear you. Yeah, I don't know. I think, I think, I think I'm getting flu. Yeah, link where guy left to carry block it. And it was when every time in Thomas saw, how about Thomas block and where left? I know the right one will follow. <laughs> and then it's headache. And I'm, I'm telling you, I know for the next three days I'll be flat on my bed. A workmanship created in Christ Jesus talking a foul language defiling your body why are you entangling yourself again with the language of the world whereas you have been redeemed with the, by the precious blood of Jesus Christ oh say neighbor you are too powerful Say, say you are too powerful. Say when I look at you, I see Christ. Say I just see Christ. Say you are shining. Demons can't even stand you. I want you to reach a place, a time, a place where you walk into the hospital, people get healed. Yesterday at work, there is this person that we normally share the word of God. When I went to her, she said, hey, Pastor, I think my blood pressure is high. <laughs> Please pray for me. I said, I'm not going to pray for you. I said, what? I said, no, I'm here. Uh, in my environment, there cannot be sickness. It's, it's not possible. He said, she said that, that, that. I said, hmm. And she started, she said, oh, the headache is gone. Oh, my back is gone. Okay, I'm fine. Okay, what did you do? I said, I, I, I don't pray for that. I am in Christ. And Christ is in me. Do you understand? You are where? In Christ. And Christ is where? So you, it makes your environment what? A demon-free zone. When demons look at you, they see a sign, no entry. Am I talking to someone? Do you see a no entry sign? Do you see a no entry sign? Uh, yeah, in, in, yeah, now let us close quickly. I want, I want to show you something to excite you. Colossians 1.13 Colossians 1.13 what does he say? What does he say? Colossians one thirteen. Yes, yes, yes. What? From what? And conveyed us when. This is not something that will happen when you are in heaven it is happening now it has happened already you have been delivered from the kingdom of darkness Amen. not you shall be Amen. are we together Amen. you say I'm delivered from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of the king of the son of God Jesus Christ so that is your position 
So if you are in your kingdom, what do you do? You, you speak the kingdom language. The, in the kingdom, when you speak the kingdom language, you know how to activate the angels. The soldiers, the army in the kingdom. Some of you, since they are speaking, the, the, your angels are confused. They don't know whether it's a command or a complaint or a comment. They, 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 can't, they can't differentiate or worry. Your angels don't know what you are saying. I'm sick, I'm healed by his stripes with all swan. Everything, everything done. The angels don't know whether to come or go. Psalm 103, verse 20 says, The angels of the Lord excel in strength. He did unto the voice of his word. So the moment you speak the word of God, what do angels do? They stand up. What do we do now? What do we attack? So, they, no, this one is talking about sickness. Okay, yeah, it's not for me. It's Michael. Michael will say, I'm sitting down. I'm the angel of war. It's not for me. Uh, he's looking for you. Those are for ministering angels. Who, 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 who ministers unto those who have inherited diseases? What, what, who, what would they minister healing? They come and minister healing. I remember there was a time some years back when I was very sick, I went home. When I went home, my father prayed for me, Pastor K.R. He prayed for me. As I was sleeping, I saw angels literally taking things out of my blood, removing things out of my blood. I woke up healed. Like literally healed. Why? Those are ministering angels. They come and minister life unto you. So when you speak a kingdom language, what do you activate? Do you minister the angels of the ministry of finance? Do you activate the angels of the ministry of finance? Do you activate the angels of the ministry of relationships? Do you activate the angels of the ministry of healing? Or the angels of war? When Daniel was praying, as I was praying because he prayed Jeremiah 29 verse 10. At Jeremiah 29 verse 10, Jeremiah said, after 70 years, the captives will be released from Babylon. That's what Daniel prayed. As he prayed, the angel Michael said, no, that is the word of God. There is someone who's blocking that breakthrough. Let's go deal with him. Daniel was not praying for angels to fight. He was praying the word of God. He did not say, Angel Michael, I command you, go fight. No. He spoke the word of God. And the angel of God, Michael, went, he fought the prince of Persia and defeated him and released the Israelites from captivity. So when you speak, you need to learn to speak the language that will release the ministering spirits. Hallelujah. Don't, don't, don't speak the language that will release the ministering spirits of death from the kingdom of darkness. Am I talking to someone? Amen. They are your servants, angels. They are working for you. Now we're going to make some confessions. One thing that is exciting about being the child of God. I think we Christians... We got this assurance that Jesus is the high priest of our confessions. Do you know, he is the minister of words in heaven. Jesus is waiting for your words and become a high priest over your words. And say, God, she has spoken. Your chief intercessor, she has spoken. We need to do something about it. What do you mean, Jesus? She said, in the name of Jesus. Yeah. So it's as good as me speaking, God. We need to do something about this situation. So he has become the high priest of your words. So many, when you pray, your words are not falling on the ground. When you speak, Jesus is listening. 
He said, God, we need to send reinforcement. Something must happen in that situation. I, 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 I gave you a testimony about the lady that I prayed to on Thursday. I've never met the lady. She's in Venda. She couldn't speak. She was mad. After that, she was muted. She couldn't talk anymore. As I released, God said, release the blood of Jesus Christ. Sent, he gave me the way. Hebrews 1.14. Declared ministering spirits, angels to go minister unto her. Say this in the name of Jesus. I did that. After 2 o'clock Sunday, my mother said, I didn't want to call you in the morning. That woman, she's fine. She's speaking. I did not go there. What happened? The angels, the ministering spirits, went there and set her free. So what language are you speaking? Who are you in the spiritual realm? Are you dominating or dominated? Because the, the dominant voice release the dominant spirits. It's if your dominant voice is dead, you release the demonic spirits of death. If your dominant voice is life, by the word of God, you will release the dominant voice of what? The dominant spirit of what? Of life. Hallelujah. Amen. At home, we're always correcting each other, Daniel and my wife. I will say another one word to my children. He said, no, 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 you don't speak like that. I cancel those words in Jesus' name. I say, I'm going to listen. She will say something. I, say, mm, 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 mm. I cancel those words in Jesus' name. It does sound like a game, but it's not a game. We, we, we have become too sensitive to what we say. All in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Say my high priest. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ works by my words. Prayed and spoken under the authority of his word. Say whatever I say in the name of Jesus, the kingdom of God moves for my sake. Hallelujah. You cannot be poor. You cannot lack. You just cannot be. Put your, your hand on your chest. Say, I'm blessed. Beyond measure. Say, there is nothing that the enemy can do about it. Say the cross has done it all for me. Can I tell you when will Satan defeat you? When he undo the cross. Yeah, that's the only time that he will defeat you. If he can undo what happened on the cross, then he can defeat you. I want you to get this picture in your mind. That when Jesus Christ was being crucified on the cross, you were on his chest. He was looking at you, saying, my daughter, I'm doing this for you. I'm dying your death. I'm suffering your sufferings. I'm carrying your pain. Everything that I'm doing on the cross is because of you. If you see that, you will never see yourself sick. If sickness come, you see Jesus on the cross with your name engraved on the palm of his hand. I'm doing this for you. I'm doing this for you. If, even if you were the only person in this world, I will still die for you. That's why much he loves you. What do you choose to believe in? I'll speak to you like Joshua. I commend you to choose life. Speak life. Avoid speaking death. You are the image of God. 
Hallelujah. You are the only creation that has dual citizenship. Human beings have got citizenship in the spiritual realm and here on earth. And you, you, you have the ability to control what's happening in the spiritual realm through your words and your thoughts, by the way. And your thoughts. Your thoughts has a voice in the spiritual realm. That's the reason why God said, I know my thoughts that I have towards you. Thoughts to prosper you, not to harm you. He didn't say, I know my ways. If God knows that when he thinks about you to prosper, you shall prosper. The spiritual realm moves. So when you think yourself poor, you shall be poor. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Say, Jesus, Jesus, you are the Lord, the Lord of, my life. of my life. Let us go to the last verse now, Philippians 2. We are closing Philippians 2. 9 to 11. And you go and call your brothers and sisters. Come back to church. There is no third wave. It's nothing like that in the church. 2 9 to 11. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name which is above every name. No, no, man. Can we start it from five? Just 